Oh, hi. Hi, guys. Yeah, you gotta move that over. It's on the thing. There we go. Oh, there. My volume went down. We were muted for a second. Um, welcome. Welcome to Partners in Shine. Preston is smoking some Palo Santo. For all you hippies out there, you know exactly <laughs> what we're talking about. For all you non-hippies out there, it's basically like incense. <laughs> so he's not really smoking. <gasps> Look what I found in here. Look what you found. Guys, this is my spirit hood. This is not real fur for those who are wondering. It's my spirit hood. And it's made of not real fur. And actually every purchase Woo! goes to support animals in need. And it's fun, um, which is why I own it. Um, guys, we are talking sex and intimacy. Uh, we are talking how to be with fear powerfully uh, in a world that feels a little scary sometimes. And we are talking about the one thing that most personal development ain't talking about. Mm. That's super important. Let's go. Let's go. So, Look, Rastafari! Hold on, I need to get my hair out of my face so my spirit hood get can. Get my Paulo right. Hold on, perfectly. I gotta share this on my page. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> you guys ready? Are you Are guys you ready? ready? So, um, in my spirit hood, I found this awesome little plastic ring that was most likely gifted to me at Burning Man because this was the last Burning time I wore Man. This. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you to whoever gifted me this beautiful plastic ring. I will cherish it forever. And it has once again touched and inspired my life. Mm -hmm. So, that's the, the gift of Burning Man. Yay. We love you guys. Okay, so let's start with sex. Mm. Sex. So Preston posted um, a post on his Facebook saying, hey guys, if you have any questions, post them here. And we got quite a few, like, Tinder slash sex slash... Well, let's just read it so you guys can hear it because it's <laughs> pretty funny. Interesting questions. Glenn Money, Glenn. who's our friend and <laughs> also works with me um, behind the scenes, wrote, if I swipe right from a space of... I'm already enough. Can I still find my one? And then he wrote, asking for a friend. <laughs> Not for him, of course. Um, we need to know, and you guys need to help us. For those of you Tinder yeah, folks, what is, is right? does right mean that you like accepted them and right. you like them? Or does left, left mean? Yes. So yeah, what happens? Is swiping right, does swiping <laughs> right mean that like you're saying, yo, I want to... Like, I want to get down. I'm a yes I, like, to that Like, bring it. Like, let's have sex or let's go on a date or something. Um, or is it I'm um, a no? Yes. I'm guessing it's a yes because if you swipe, yeah. that means you're interested, no? Yeah, I think, I mean, I assume so. I don't know. Well, we're waiting for you guys to tell us. Glenn, Glenn why what? don't you tell yes, us what Glenn, what does swiping <laughs> right mean? Does that mean that you're ready to go ahead and go there, or is it your friend ready to go ahead and go there? Yeah, because it's not about you. Uh huh. It's about your friend. Yeah, exactly. Obviously. I'd love to go to Burning Man one year. Yeah, it's ridiculously awesome. Yeah, Cam, awesome. you would love it. Uh -huh. It's amazing. All right, so while Glenn figures out what swiping right means. Yes, no one's going to tell us whether swiping right. <laughs> right means. is yes. Okay. Right is yes. Okay. Got it. Perfect. So Annika, now that we know. Stress 22. What up, girl? So swiping right. If you swipe right from the space of I'm already enough, can I still find my one? You know, the answer is whatever you choose it to be. Mm -hmm. Like, it, people can find their one on a dating app. They can find their one in line at the grocery store. They can find their one wherever their one is. Um, it's a decision to be ready for that type of relationship, period. Yeah. Like, you're either ready for it or you're not. And I think a lot of people are kind of BSing themselves and going, oh, I'm so ready to be in the relationship of my life and, like, be with my one. And really, they still want to be single. Yeah. So it's like all good. Do what you need to do. Well, they they want to be kind of single and also kind of in a relationship. They want they're, their cake and they want to eat it too. Exactly. And yeah. you can do that just with be, the right person. Just be honest about it. Exactly. Yeah. And and so yes, our opinion, you you can swipe left, right, you can swipe up, down, whatever you swipe. Yeah. When it's time for you to meet your one, it's going to happen no matter what, yes. whether that's on Tinder or Bumble or Match.com or you, in the grocery store. Or you might be on a Tinder date or and on your the waitress toilet. might be the one. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like you, you can't stop it from happening. Yes, okay? exactly. You it's cannot stop it from happening. Unavoidable. It really is. Guys, I just saw like, okay, so obviously the spirit hood, you get the whole animal thing, but what if my hair looked like that? That would be hilarious. I don't know if I would. Like, look at it. I kind of have like an 80s mullet. You do. Like, I feel like I'm like an 80s rock star. I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if it'll I'm work. I'm going to like wear a wig where my hair looks like this. Yep. Okay. 
On to the question about sex. Who asked it? I think Matt. Matt Comma asked it. I don't even know it. if I read it. I think Matt. Oh, Comma. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bit of a taboo topic, but I think it's worth talking about because it's important. Topic: sex. Most of us are taught. Most of us were taught what sex was and wasn't through movies, porn, school, etc. Yes. And I think we're only taught the surface of what it can be about. I think it would be interesting to hear your viewpoints on the topic and what it is and what it isn't. Mm. Um, so sex is a taboo topic and especially in America I find it's extra taboo mm -hmm. um, because uh, we are really built on a puritanical society that came from, you yeah. know, settlers from the UK. Uh, Bring out the big words like that. Huh? We're very um, conservative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes. um, but the craziest thing is, is everybody at some point has sex. Yeah. And we like to pretend like we don't. And we like to pretend like if you talk about it, you're a terrible human. Um, by the way, P.S., if you think we're terrible humans for talking about sex, unfollow us immediately. We do not want you in our tribe because this is, <laughs> this is why you're here. You are here because of sex. Yes. You are here because of sex. You are here as an awesome human being mm -hmm. having an amazing life because somebody decided to have sex and they got pregnant. Yes. So, like, let's just accept that, okay? Let's, like, get that out of the way. Yeah. And get the whole trigger about sex out of the way. So, so for me, I'd say, Nikolai, what up? All the Stretch 22 family is in the building. Yeah, I got my soul schoolers up in here, too. Um, sex is a conversation. Yeah. Sex is a dance. Sex is pure creativity. It is one of the greatest gifts we have ever been given from hu from whatever created us. Um, you know, anything that can create another being is power, yeah. is pure power. And so, uh, for us, sex sex is is an unfolding. Sex is the lotus flower that's forever unfolding. Sex is that there's there's. There's so much that goes into that, right? There's a, there's the in energy exchange. There's a physical energy uh, exchange. There's an energy exchange. There's the emotional um, and spiritual exchange that happens, and that conversation is happening on many different planes. Yeah. And and it's interesting because our society is in one breath, you know, uh, over sexualized, mm -hmm. and in another breath, completely repressed. Yeah. And and so which is which is the cause for the over sexualization. Yes. And the, the hiding of it yes. and the making it wrong. Yes. Which I find is interesting because porn is such an interesting thing now too because it's so accessible. Mhm. Mm um and porn for the vast majority obviously it's not all porn but the vast majority of it is um very it's fantasy, right? It's it's not calibrated to the the normalcy of everyday life mm -hmm. and what it's doing is it's creating a distorted view of what sex is supposed to be like and what's interesting is a lot of younger people now have this completely distorted view of what sex is yes and sex truly a is whatever you want it to be it's it's an expression at the baseline it's mm -hmm. an expression of you and it's an expression of you with another in an intimate way um but what's really interesting is is that a lot of people have sex and the last thing they are is truly intimate yeah you know like anybody can have sex anybody can physically have sex right but how many people can actually be intimate with somebody uh-huh and without sex even. Yes. Like deep intimacy is one of the rarest things in this world because everybody's pretending like their shit doesn't stink and it's all good. And everybody's pretending like they're perfect and they've got it all figured out and all together and okay. And what's really going on? Mm. And I, I think when we allow ourselves to be seen in a deep and powerful and incredible way that is transparent, um, we open ourselves up for true intimacy and, and intimacy is such a catch-22 because every single human being wants it but most human beings are not willing to give it no. and they get really pissed off when they say I don't understand why I'm not connecting with people it's because you're not willing to open up and connect yep. that's why and that was a hard lesson I had to learn and whether you're having sex or not when you include intimacy in your relationships and in your life what happens is you have a deep and profound realization of what true relationship is mm -hmm. and what true humanity is and what's truly possible 
for this world and for yourself. Yeah. Um, side note. Share this video and you get a free book. Not all of you. Not we're all of you. We're gonna pick one of you. <laughs> Just one of so you. So if you share this video right now, we're gonna go through after it's over and look through and we're gonna either send one or maybe even two of you a free copy of Now or Never or uh, Alexi's uh, book or mine if you have yeah. now or never already uh by the way suniva i just saw you popped on uh suniva is awesome she's got an amazing um daily raw that you guys should check out on instagram she does like healthy food recipes and she's the bomb so yeah hi. um <laughs> another thing i'd love to dive into is this uh around sex the topic of sex is how many of us are shamed so early and, yes. and, and this shaming, which usually happens, you know, not on purpose. I don't think our parents are purposely saying, you know, because it's, think about it. It's, it's, it's the, you know, the seven-year-old who, or, you know, the five-year-old who dis, who's discovering their own penis. And, and what happens when that is happening and someone sees it and they go, don't do that. Don't do that in public, right? What that little boy or little girl goes through when they're discovering their own private parts, that is a... Um, What's, what's the word for it? Uh, an installation yeah. that creates trauma. Later on. Later on. Yeah, and repression. Hi, Mom. Mom just joined. Yes. Hi, Mom. Alexi's um, mom is on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. You know, there's a lot of uh, repressed people. There's a lot of people who have their own stories around sexuality. And, um, you know, even myself. Like, I've, I have stuff that it's like, oh... Where did I get that? And what's interesting is I want to read a passage. This is one of my favorite books, Intimacy by Osho. For those of you in Soul School, this is our book of the month in February. And Osho's the bomb. He's a little um, out there, which I really appreciate and respect. Um, one of the things he says here, unless you drop all your repressions and inhibitions, which are the gifts of your religions, your cultures, your societies, your parents, and your education, you will never be able to be intimate with someone and you are the only one who can take initiative. Like, that's just, I just, this whole book is highlighted um, and falling apart because I've read it a thousand times. Mm. But that's just one example of, we don't realize how repressed we are. We don't realize how um, programmed we are and how many little installations have been programmed into our world at four, at five, at seven, at nine, at 10, at 14, mm -hmm. at 16, at 20. And all of this adds up yes. to you stepping in to bed with somebody. All of that is coming with you. And a little note for those of you who are out there dating, um, something to really keep in mind, and this doesn't mean like stop having sex, but something to keep in mind is Every time you have sex, you're actually inviting somebody's energy into your energy field. Mm -hmm. And you're carrying that person's energy, all of their sexual repression, Everywhere all of their go. sexual history, all of their sexual stories. You're actually like installing that into your energetic field. Mm. And a lot of people who are dating quite frequently and exchanging their bodies with a lot of people wonder why they're not meeting people of caliber, it's because there's no energy. Yes. Your energy is so low because you're gifting yeah. it out to so many people that um, you're attracting from that space. So that's just a little side note. Yeah, and and with all of that said, there's nothing wrong with sharing your energy with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, we uh, there's a passage in Conversations with God where uh, Neil Donald Walsh is talking to God and, and God says something like, you'd rather have somebody um, You'd rather have the guy um, dying on the on the field uh, of war. You'd rather see the guy dying on the on the field during a war than to see a woman in her full sexual expression, mm. right? And and I remember reading that and going, "Wow, that is so true." Because whenever a woman, not and this is not absolute, but you know, in our society, especially in Western culture, when a woman is owning that part of herself, let's take, um, what's her name from Sex in the City? Carrie. No, the other one. The one that Oh, we, Miranda. No, Miranda? Sam. Samantha. Sam. 
Samantha, Samantha you right? Can so, tell I so haven't watched it. I haven't watched it in forever, but <laughs> I remember. So, so, so how we hold Samantha is she's the slut, right? Mm -hmm. And so just because she's owning her own sexual energy and her own sexual body, right? And, and and like what that means, we label her the slut. Yeah. And so, to me, this this conversation is clearly super deep oh, and we can could go, go on hours all day, every on day. It. Um, but. Our society definitely, and it's interesting as well, and you know, we're not parents yet. Um, if we are blessed to have that experience, we are welcoming it, uh, just not yet. Um, and, but seeing the little girls, right? Yeah. Like, like seeing what little girls are seeing, Oh, right? we talked about this last night. Like, and, and like, you know, the, like for instance, uh, Miley Cyrus and like her, her you know, and like this, this over-sexualized thing that's being pushed out where all the little girls have to have selfies and they're squeezing their little 13-year-old boobs together <laughs> trying to like get guys to, to, to like them in a particular yeah. way. And like, it's, it's an interesting thing, guys, and there's no right answer to this. And that's, yeah. that's the thing to really get across. Sex is such a personal yes thing and the the biggest thing that i'll say is this that will really support anyone on your journey no matter where you're at take a look at the stories and judgments you have around sex around you know other people that you might be judging around yourself that you mm -hmm. may have judged in the past yeah. um look at the judgments that you make and ask yourself why you're judging because often our judgments come from our own triggers and our own repressions yes and we see something sometimes in someone else that we recognize that we haven't fully owned within ourselves. So mm -hmm. we judge it to make it bad, to kind of give ourselves a backdoor excuse to why we haven't done it yet. Yep. So really start to look and get honest about where you're judging others who are in their sexuality in particular ways. Two, start looking at how you might be in your head, what stories you might have around sex, um, the beliefs and blueprints that you've been designed or have been designing in sex and what you've made sex mean. Mm -hmm. Because when you really get clear about your stories around it and maybe some of the sexual repressions you've had from your past, like think about the first time you had uh, sexual curiosity. Think about what happened. Was mm -hmm. that um, okay with your family? Was it repressed by your family? Was it condemned you know by your religion maybe yeah. and just really start to like peel it apart and get curious become a scientist of this and know that there is no right or wrong when it comes to your own body yes you are the master of your body and you get to decide what works <clears throat> for you and i don't care who's the expert out there on sex you are the best expert for you you are the person who knows what you're comfortable with, what feels good, what you wanna stretch into, mm -hmm. um, what stories you have around it that you're ready to break through. You are the, the person, period. So no matter what anybody says, listen to your own intuitive move into where you need to go next when it comes to your own sexuality. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my mom said no your mom was cool uh, she didn't repress it uh, <laughs> no mom you did not repress it in me thank you <laughs> also um i saw charles mentioned uh childhood abuse mm -hmm. um and uh you know not many people like to admit to this but it happens more often than we think yeah and so uh especially what, with men what i want to share um is is that while while it is, there are many forms of psychology, there are many schools of thought that say you, you go deep into your childhood, et cetera, et cetera. No matter where you are on that scale, um, meeting that with love and compassion, yeah. going through a forgiveness process and accepting yes. that that did happen, yes. and that whoever did it to you um, had to have um, some type of hurt in their own past to step into a place like that. Yeah. And so starting with acceptance is a good idea because, um, yeah, it's just a good idea. Yeah, and, and Charles, like, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to have a sexual trauma. It's, it's not, you know, but like Preston's saying, the thing is, is, it is a part of your story and it's it's there mm -hmm. so what do you choose to do with it you know and and the best thing to do is there's a lot of trauma therapy you can do 
Um, there's forgiveness therapy and forgiveness processes you can run through. Even just sharing it and, and sharing it with other people, often like the shame is so big within us because we keep this secret for so long mm -hmm. and we feel like we're the only ones that it's ever happened to. And often just sharing about our sexual trauma, mm -hmm. it relieves us of the guilt and the shame because all of a sudden we recognize that you know, one in four men reported have had sexual trauma. One in three women reported have had sexual trauma. And that doesn't make it okay, but it makes us feel less alone. And it makes us feel less um, shameful about what occurred. So, um, yep. yeah. Beautiful. All right. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to transition, guys. Transitioning. Okay. We have a, a great question about fear. Um, somebody mentioned the political atmosphere that's happening. Like, how do we stay? What was what was it? How do we staying positive and strong in Trump America? So staying positive and, tr and strong. And let's not let's not throw Trump into this um, because that would be playing the same game that um, we often most of us don't like from the Trump camp. So let's just talk about the fear that exists in a political atmosphere that's very tense because we're all feeling it. Whether you're a Trump supporter, Hillary supporter, Jill Stein, Bernie Sanders, doesn't matter. We're all feeling the, the tension and the, the fear and um, just kind of this unknown feeling that's kind of emerging. And how to stay positive and strong, I'll give my two cents here. Um, a lot of people get really um, debilitated by the fear because you get caught up in the what if scenarios. And the, the what if isn't here yet. The what if is this imaginary someday that's not here, may never happen, we don't know for sure. But what we do know for sure is the now moment. And what I know for sure in the now moment, I'll speak for myself, is that I'm a fully capable human being that has a voice, that has the power to make actions, that has the power to show up as what I claim I want in the world. So what I can do and what moves me past the fear is being the result that I want. And like, hands down, that's the game changer. Because a lot of people want to focus on the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem's so, so big, it's so big, it's insurmountable. What do we do? It feels so big, it feels so big. Yeah, it feels mm -hmm. big when you're looking at it that way. But when you're looking at yourself as a solution, mm -hmm. guess how big the problem is when you're the solution? This big. Because you know that you are the solution for your reality. And even if your reality only touches one, two, or three people, yes. that's enough to create a ripple effect of change. Mm -hmm. So while some of you are sitting there scared, hiding in the corner, going, I don't know what to do, get up and use your gifts. Use your talents, use your voice, use your heart, use your love, and be the change that you wish to see in the world. Period. Period. That's my two cents. <laughs> Yeah, I second that, um, and and remind us all that that what you permit, you promote, mm. and um, that and this is we wrote about this in Now or Never um, that your complaint is your mission. Yeah, and so if if you are having experience uh, living in America or wherever you are with the government, um, and it, it it just won't you, it, you can't shake it. This is an indicator that you see a possibility. Yep. And if you see the possibility, then instead of just being, you know, the, the couch jockey and sitting on the sidelines, you get to jump in the game yeah. and do something about it while keeping, and this is the key point, keeping your vibration high. Boom. A lot of people tend to jump in and, and, and tackle issues, but they're tackling it from a low vibration. Yeah. And... You know, the only way to get more is to be more. And so making sure that your cup is full, making sure that you're vibrating high when also opposing certain things. And it's okay to oppose things. We have contrast in our world, mm -hmm. right? But if you spend too much time there, you're just going to give it more life. Yeah. And so yes. we see things and we go, ah, that doesn't align with me. That doesn't feel good for me. And in my opinion, that, that possibly doesn't feel good for a lot of people. So what am I going to do about it? Am I going to focus on that and keep talking about that? Or am I going to create such a lane that's so powerful, that's so beautiful, that people can't deny that it's undeniable uh, uh, that this feels better for the whole? Yeah. And so 
have them look over here instead of pouring all your energy over there. Yeah, because guys, we, we <clears throat> cannot we cannot fight hate with more hate. Yes. We cannot fight fear with more fear. We cannot fight scarcity with mm -hmm. more scarcity. Mm -hmm. If you want to live in an abundant world, if you want to live in a world that feels positive and filled with love and possibility for our children and our children's children, mm -hmm. guess what you have to be? Love, possibility, and abundance. Yep. Anything other than that vibration, you are being a part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. And even if you find yourself complaining about the problem, saying, well, I'm not a part of the problem, that's the problem. No, you're a part of the problem because you're not being the solution. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard hammer I'm laying down, but it's true. Yep. And, and, and that's the issue, especially in America. I'm getting on my high horse soapbox right now. <laughs> I can go into this, but especially in America, everybody wants to look at the government and say the government is this and the government is that. Okay, so what are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. What are you personally doing about yes. it? You're gonna sit here and complain about it. I don't see you taking any action to make it different. Yep. Do something about it. Be the change. Stop being the freaking blamer on the sidelines yelling at everybody else about what's not working. Take action and be a stand for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Yes, it is our <laughs> job. <laughs> To clean up our own consciousness. Yeah. Start with that. Find the places, and, and I'm talking to myself, and, and Alexi's talking to herself yes. as well. Find the places where, where you're still warring, where you're still judging, where you're still uh, contradicting, where you're still hypocritical, where you're still acting like a four-year-old, because I can guarantee you, if you look hard enough, you'll find those places yes. where you're still acting out in your relationship, yes. in your relationship with yourself. Words are very powerful. Think about how you talk to yourself before you start looking out there. Remember, you clean up your consciousness, I clean up mine, she cleans up hers, the whole world is clean. Yep. Yep, yep. So on that note, guys, really take stock and just ask yourself a really powerful question. What do I constantly bitch and complain about? <laughs> like, <laughs> ask yourself that. Like, I ask myself that quite a bit, and I find that it's usually the same stuff, and then I go and do something about it. Um, even if it's something small or if it's something big, I go and I do something about it because I don't like complaining. Um, and I, I come from a past of complaining and I don't like it and I find myself doing it sometimes and my solution for complaining is find the solution. Find the solution. Stop mm -hmm. complaining about it. Okay. Yep. Now. Um, what you want to do? Well. What you want to do? We have a thing we want to share with you guys um, because Preston and I have been talking about this quite a bit lately. Personal development is wildly missing a massive component. Mm-hmm. That people <laughs> keep talking. I get so distracted, Don't guys. I have like I'm like I see this little thing coming in my, in my view. That people okay. personal development personal development is missing this massive thing that um a lot of trainers are just they're missing and while I, there's so much good stuff out there there's a lot of bullshit out there as well but there's a lot of really great work out there but Preston and I have we take a lot of stuff like we take a lot of courses a lot of workshops all that and we've recognized that there's a massive thing like this gap in the industry mm -hmm. that is is here and this is kind of half a call to action and half a like, holy shit, why is more people not doing this? Yeah, it's just a, it's, it's a, a flashlight yeah. on what is, uh, what could be the next level uh, of everything, the industry, people, human beings, etc. right? And, and and that is the conversation about... Everyone's like, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> Just tell us already. Stop <laughs> talking, people. And that is the... <gasps> The, we find that the one thing that's that's really missing, and and I get it, not because a lot of people, and and we're gonna say it in a second, but it's very easy. <laughs> He's dragging this out, guys. It's very easy <laughs> to like read a book and then put a quote on the internet. Yeah. It's very easy to do that. It's very easy to look like you're. Uh, you're living the. Yeah, yeah. It's very easy principles. to do that. And there's quite a few people in our industry who do this. Who we know. 
And it's fantastic. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's fantastic. What we are saying is that there's another level, right? Yeah. So, so there's one thing to just lip service, right? Know this it. is all intellect. Know it from here. Yeah. Read a bunch of good books, highlight, take the notes, know the principles, <clears throat> be able to share it eloquently and beautifully mm -hmm. and on stage. Yes. And what most people and most personal development trainings are missing, and this is really the secret, it's, it's the thing that I think most trainers don't want people to have because then they might not need them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the embodiment, embodiment piece. It's mm -hmm. the, yes, okay, you get it here, but are you living it here? And what's interesting is, you know, Preston and I have done a bunch of different trainings where even now we're in NLP, which NLP is, it's fantastic and we're getting our master practitioner. Yes. Um, but we were just talking tonight how it's a lot of this. Yes. Like it's, it's very like logical and us using the rational brain and then also the unconscious brain and getting under there and repatterning the brain. It's, it's really cool stuff. It's great. And it doesn't get into the body. Doesn't mean shit if it's not in the body. And, and so let us explain what we mean by this because yes. some of you guys have not taken the bridge experience or, or are even familiar with what we're talking about. And yeah. so when we say the embodiment of something, we mean like literally it's in your cells, right? So, so the body is a living library. It stores all traumas, it stores everything. And, and so there's one thing to read things and have it here. It's a whole nother to, to literally raise your vibration. It's a whole nother to literally be in high stress, anxiety, possible uh, situations and to, and to move above that, right? We know a lot of people who know a bunch of stuff. They know it intellectually, but when they come to our workshops and we put them in situations where- Who they show up as is completely different. It's a whole different <laughs> ball game. It's very yeah. easy to, to look like the, you know, um, the freaking Buddha yeah. When nobody's challenging you, yeah. it's very easy to do that when you're, you, you, you know, you're, it's, um, you're putting in a little package and you're putting it on social media. It's a whole nother ball game to have that living you everywhere you go yeah. and have it be the majority of, of you, like, and not the minority. I find that some people know how to be the embodiment when it comes to very particular Speaking. compartmentalized <laughs> places, right. right? But like move that into the rest of their lives, move it into a relationship where stuff comes up. Where, 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 you know, things get heightened, move it into a business where, where you, you're um, trying to create something. Can you still be the embodiment of love Yeah. in a moment like that? Yeah, and guys, embodiment is not about being perfect. Mm -mm. Like, let's, let's be clear about that. It's about being perfect in your imperfections and, and being willing to call yourself on the work that you're doing. Yes. Because the work it's freaking meaningless if you're not putting it to action. Just because you read a book one time or even 12 times for that matter, or went to Tony Robbins one time or 20 times for that matter, doesn't mean that you're living it yet. And the work is, if you are truly committed to mastery, the work is, can you keep calling yourself on your own shit when you think you know, when your ego's going, you know this, you know this, you don't need to do anything, they're wrong, you're right, they're wrong. Can you call yourself on your shit and embody the work? Yep. Because that's when you actually are the person that people go, wow, there's something different about this human. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but there is something different mm -hmm. and it's called embodiment. Yes. It is called, I don't just read, I don't just regurgitate, I don't just know a lot of shit, yeah. but I'm living it. I am in the process. I'm not perfect, but I am willing. I am so willing to call myself on where I'm not there yet. And here's the interesting thing about this, guys. So, so some of you heard this, and I get it because this is how, what we're trained to do. And you went, okay, so how do I get there? Mm, yeah, some of right? just say, how do I do it? So, you, so, so, so you, you, you hear this and you go, so how do I get there? Yeah. And, and so the conversation is, is there is no there to get to. <laughs> This is the catch-22. This is the catch-22. This is the, the, the divine paradox. This is yeah. the cosmic joke. Is There is no there to get to. You'll never land, yeah. right? It's a practice. It's, it's something you live from. It's, yeah. it's the beginner's mindset. I'm going to quote Conversations with God again because I'm reading it right next to my bed. Um, he said in there, there was one point where he said, you, you, you can't hear God until you stop saying and claiming that you already heard God. Mm. 
and and so or that you already know him yes and yeah. and so or it or she right. you know um but like universe whatever. take god out of that and just think about it from the standpoint of like the moment we move back into the beginner's mindset the moment we, we, we take ourselves off the pedestal and go, okay, there's still work here to do. And can I fall in love with the work? Can I fall in love yeah. with, the, with, the, with the practice and the process and, and let go? <laughs> Which is what most people hate. And let go of the product, right? Yes. We want the product. Like, get me, get me yeah. to the top of the mountain so everybody can praise me. Get, me. get me here. Let me make, you know, hit this many. And let me talk about me for a second. Let me get this many thousands of views and this many likes and this many things so then I can be good enough and then, and then we're done, right? That's the ego mind, the wounded mind, playing games, playing tricks. And so when that comes up for me, because it does, not all the time, but it has, and when it, when it does, I, I notice it. Ah, oh, interesting. You're trying to get there. Yeah. Right? You're trying to get there as if there's a there to get to. Yeah, and, and this back. is, that's the thing to notice, guys. Like the human thing that we all signed up for, however we signed up for it, because we're here mm -hmm. <laughs> in our human skin. Um, the human thing is a paradox. Mm -hmm. The human thing doesn't make sense all the time. And the human thing is messy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so messy. And somehow, some way, at some point in the journey, we bought the lie that we were supposed to get out of this thing perfectly mm. and with a lot of money, yep. mind you. <laughs> like yep. Somehow that got inserted in there like, hey, you're supposed to leave this earth perfect and with a lot of money. Yep. And most of us <laughs> bought into that. And guess what? We bought into it with our time, with our energetic, energetic concerns and our energy and our emotions. We bought into it with our relationships, we put our relationships on hold for mm -hmm. the money, for the fame, for the, I'm, I'm not there yet and I need to get there and I'll do whatever yeah. it takes. We bought into it with our joy. We bought into it with our, our just our vibrancy, our aliveness. We have sold our soul for the idea of perfect, mm -hmm. for the idea of wealth and money and security as if that's fucking real. Yep. Like, Seriously wrap your head around this people and I've been thinking about this even for myself like what have I sold my joy and my abundant mm -hmm. beautiful love for yep. like think about as you came into this world as a child think about what you were or if you've seen a baby recently think about like this little blob of awesome that this little thing is and this little blob of awesome comes into the world with with no programming with just joy with love with survival, yes, mm -hmm. but, but also with curiosity for life, a, a zest, a joy, a, this thing that's intangible. And then what happens? Then we get told that you have to do this so that you can get money, so that you can be secure, yes. so that as if that is all that matters. It's, like, it's all a layaway plan. It's all, it's all <sighs> contingency. We were talking about this the other day. You, you, you get good grades so you can get into a good school. And then you get into a good school so you can graduate and get a good job. For what? And then you get a good job so you can finally feel secure mm. and you can get the house and you can get the dog and you can get the fill in the blank. And all of that is contingent. It's all on layaway. It's never now. It's never the practice. It's never the process. It's always about this thing in the future that's yeah. going to somehow make me okay. And this doesn't work anymore. Yeah. It doesn't. And, and we talk a lot of shit about millennials, right? They're lazy, they're this, they're that. They don't want to. It's because they're not buying that old bullshit. Yeah. The and baby boomers and all of the other generations that have come. And remember, we know there's only one living generation. Yeah. We're all in this thing together. But just for uh, compartmentalizing sake, the generations that have come before, our parents who did the best they could from where they could with the tools they had available, they adopted a system. And their parents adopted a system. And their parents adopted a system. A system that is from hundreds of years ago that no longer works for this human. Nope. And, and guys, that system, we're all buying into it in some way, shape, or form. Even a little bit. Yep. So the work is, the embodiment of this is, <laughs> how do you come back to the love that you are, the joy yes. that you are? Mm. Without, without sacrificing it for these things. Yep. For what? Your shoes? For a bag? To live in a nice neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Like, are you sacrificing your life for these promises that don't even freaking work? 
Like, seriously think about this, Mm because it sounds so simple, but this is really profound, because the majority of the world is working towards something that they think will make them happy, which actually will always keep them a slave and a prisoner. Yes, Like, really think about that. Addicts. Chasing the high. Money. Happiness. As if it exists out there. Happiness is self-generated, guys. You want to be happy? Start thinking about positive things. Start being grateful for sunshine Mm -hmm. and rain and clouds and people and life and spirit hoods and feathers. Like, start being grateful for your life. You want to be happy. Stop thinking it's going to come with, I need to find my purpose or I need to have more money or I need to marry the one and find the one and then I'll be happy. No, you get to be happy now and then you'll find the one Mm. then you'll tap into your purpose Mm. then you'll Mm. live a life full of joy because you're creating it yes it's self-generated and this is what embodiment is about and personal development is not teaching this they're not teaching people that you already have everything you freaking need right inside of you Mm -hmm. you just need to unlearn all the shit that doesn't work all the programming that doesn't work so that you can come into and emerge into the Mm -hmm. space of love and joy that you already are yes and that's it there's nothing to develop. Mm-hmm. It's already there. Clear out the bullshit so the real you can emerge. Mm. Get him. I've been wanting to show my lion. <laughs> <laughs> this is not... <laughs> you guys, yeah. let me tell you guys something. I never did, um, what do you call that thing? Show and tell. So, uh, okay. like, I just was. Which is why you like to do it on Which here. is why I like to do it now. So, I like to bring my toys and my little things. This is a beautiful lion. The lion it's a nice lion. Preston. Um, lions are actually one of the laziest creatures. They and are. They can we sleep t- most we- of the time. Everyone's like, king of the jungle. Yeah. Lions are lazy as hell. Yeah, laying on their backs all day. Yes. Especially the male lions. Do you guys know that the female lionesses are the ones who go out and hunt and do all the work? And- yes, but. No. But you know I know. No, you know I, I'm going to explain. Don't say it. I'm going to explain to you what's actually happened. So the female lions do the majority <laughs> of the hunting. If there is a bigger buffalo or a larger prey, they send a signal. This guy comes on out and he comes and he pounces because he's bigger than all of the (laughs) women. And so I love, like she can tell you, I love um, nature and studying it. I watch documentaries all day, every day. Me too. And then we go to freaking Africa. We went to Africa and we've been, this is my third safari. This will be my fourth coming up in 2017. But this last one, was the bomb was next level oh omg God. yes brady so is preston leo yes leo too bloop, bloop, rastafari let's go let's yeah. go to one more question um, or a well, couple more well i just want to finish off by saying um we love you yes we love you but i i, I really want to finish off by saying um that's what she said you guys are all in the work because you're here you're awesome mm-hmm. um because you actually get that there's more to life than what we've been sold. So, yay. Congratulate yourself for that. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, 99.9% of the planet is not here. Uh, not I'm not saying here on this live, but here in this mental and emotional space. Yep. And um, it is our job, because we know better, to do better and to be better. Um, and better, of course, is is a word that's a reference and it's totally, you know based on whatever that means to you. But if you want a better world, whatever that means to you, insert idea there, um, be it. Be the embodiment of it, live it, be the work, Mm -hmm. hold yourself responsible. And that's that's why you woke up. That's why I woke up. That's why he woke up because, uh, you know, the way showers, that's what we do. We need to show the way by being the way first. Indeed. Frida, my my cousin, ah. happy birthday, happy belated birthday. Uh, I love you. I appreciate you. Winston, brother, yeah, just popped win. on. Big win. Um, we were speaking about money earlier. Um, Winston is a stand-up guy who does financial planning. So if you saw Winston Trotter on there, uh, click on his thing. That's somebody who can really support you in taking your money game to the next level. What you want to talk about, baby? Let's go. Well, let's talk about... Um, we have a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, okay. Something that we learned... Wait. I didn't... Yeah. Uh, 
hold please how do you keep reaching new heights of honesty and intimacy and bearing yourself to each other well yes um honesty and intimacy in relationship for any of you who are in a relationship and you have the awesome opportunity to face off with your shit all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> um the way we keep deepening our intimacy is just getting more real and honest about our own stuff that comes up for us, our own stories, um, our own fears, mm -hmm. our own insecurities, um, and just sharing that. Like sharing that, when I share that with my partner from a place of responsibility where I'm like, hey, here's what I'm recognizing I'm doing. Yeah. I have this story about this thing and whoa, <laughs> I'm recognizing that maybe it comes from this part of my past. Just letting him in has been a game changer um, because I'm truly letting him see me and not like just the pretty perfect mm -hmm. me. But the, the <laughs> Please me. make that face one more time. I don't think you ever make that face. Uh, I don't think I do either. on camera. Um, it's a weird face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but letting him truly in and letting him see the parts that um, aren't perfect, aren't um, perfectly wrapped and are really messy and not messy in a way like I'm a victim and I'm dramatic, but messy in a way that I've got my shit, mm. just like he's got his shit. And I want to make that distinction because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just being messy and human, but they're like fully in victim mode. Yeah. That's not what we're talking yeah, about. That's a big difference. <laughs> Huge difference. Um, it, and it really is the game changer. And a lot of people are afraid to show up as that part of themselves um, out of fear of losing somebody. and. Let me lovingly remind you that you cannot lose what is not yours mm -hmm. um, to have. And whoever and whatever is meant for your life will be there. And whoever and whatever is oh. not will find its way out. Yep. So you get to trust that as well. Um, I'm going to answer that question. My, my cousin said something really interesting. She said, how do you, and I just want to address this because this is family here. She said, how do you communicate when you're not a communicator? Mm. And she's, I know she's speaking about relationship, nine yeah. out of 10. Um, I would question. say first things first is let go of the idea that you're not a communicator. 93% yeah. of communication is happening without the words. You're always speaking in some form or fashion. And so it would serve you um, to um, check in with your energy more than anything because your partner is catching it no matter what whether they comment on it or not is a whole nother ball game but they're catching the energy yeah. and we know many couples and have counseled couples that are going through it because one or both um, are mm, let's say constantly in a low vibrational state and being in that low vibrational state it's affecting their partner and their partner finds themselves down here and then they're arguing down here and so this, it, the whole thing is a process. What I'll say about this question about Alexi and I and how our relationship continues to grow and deepen. One, we do our own work. And yeah, we know huge. that when, when, so I know that when I am attempting to be the best version of me, I am not just doing that for me, I'm doing it for her as well. And she is in the same practice. Two, I find and make sure that I stay curious about Alexi. You know, we said this before, but the I'm moment a multi -faceted you person. the moment you name it <laughs> and think you know it, it just died, right? Yeah. So we just say, "Oh yeah, that's just my dad." The moment you think you know your dad, not literally, but metaphorically, your dad just died because yeah. now you have him in a box. And and how many of you guys have a have an issue with people holding you to your history? Have you ever been one way for years and then you, you know you you go off and you go on a journey and you learn about yourself and you come back and everybody's like, "Oh, that's still little funky ass Preston." Right? Funky. Like like funky. even though I was never funky. I don't know why I said that, but you know what I'm saying? Funky like ass. Yeah. <laughs> funky ass. You didn't even say it right. Um Alexi Pops my pimples. She does do. really funny, interesting things. Alexi is a very quirky individual who I find hilarious I on am. so many levels. Can and I so tell you what I just did? Yeah, tell them. <laughs> All right, any ladies out there will know, um, if you wear skinny jeans and they're high-waisted, when you sit, it yeah. digs into your stomach. So while Preston was talking, I just totally unbuttoned my You just my secretly jeans. took your pants off. Preston. I didn't take nice. my pants off. Nice. I just unbuttoned my <laughs> jeans. <laughs> From the top, <laughs> so I my stomach could breathe. That's all. My stomach it's ridiculous. To ridiculous. Um, yes. Okay, wait. I want to talk about that too because this is like communication is huge, and 
I want to say that most people are so stuck in their own world, mm -hmm. like their own mind, and like all, think about all the chatter that happens in your head. Yep. Just like think about the last hour or two hours today, and think about all the little things and the ups and downs and the questions and the fear and the doubt and mm -hmm. the yeah, I can't wait for the future and like whatever. Think about all that stuff that happened in the span of an hour or two hours. Yeah, all of that is happening in your partner's mind as well. As well as your parents, as well as your sister, as well as your brother, as well as your friend, as well as every single human on this planet. So while you're stuck in your own little world with yes. you and thinking like, yep. I don't know why they're not doing exactly what I need them to do for me, they are going through their own little struggle in no, their head as well. Seven, eight billion people <laughs> going through their own situation. So please, in relationship, you don't need to be like a communication ninja and have all these like tips and tricks and tools, although they're very helpful. You just need to be responsible for what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Be responsible for the stories that you're making up because everything that comes through your filter is a story mm -hmm. about what actually happened. Just be responsible for your side of it and speak to your partner from that level of honesty and responsibility. Yeah. And then do your own work too. Like work on yourself, get to know yourself, get to know your patterns, get to know your fears yes. so that you don't project it on your partner. Yes. And stay in your own lane. I know that this is a process. I find that couples get in trouble because they're trying to get there. Yeah, they're trying like, to make it perfect. It's oh, got to be perfect right gotta, now. We got we got to land, right? right and so now. like even even sex, like sex is an unfolding, right? It's a yeah. process. You meet somebody, right? And like, okay, the initial like, ah, animal attraction, sex, 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 right? And then they're, they're like, usually what follows that is this, this sort of like, um, this like letting, letting people in. Like they, they're getting one step closer to that heart, you know what I mean? Let's just say there's like nine walls, right? Nine billion walls. And, you know, yeah, nine billion <laughs> walls, right? And every, every time you go in, every year, every month, every minute that goes by that you're, you're in this dance, uh, what happens is, is one more of those walls where a brick falls off of that wall. And yeah. so it, relationships are the same. Alexi and I are awesome. I cannot even fathom what it's going to be like a year from now. Yeah. Or 10 years from now. Or like and, when we're old. Or what happens when a freaking child is introduced and then like My our head's gonna explode. love meter goes off the Richter scale and then like you hate me and then I hate you and then we love each other and then we go through that I'm going to be massively hormonal. Yep. <laughs> Um, Kim said a great thing. She said, um, don't, something like, um, don't reserve your real for just your inner circle. Yeah. You get to be real with everyone. And a lot of people would be like, no, you have to protect yourself and you need to like withhold parts of yourself <laughs> for certain people that respect and have boundaries. Yes. And what would it really take for you to just show up as you? Mm -hmm. Like so many people have the work hat. They have the like. Um, I'm going out hat. Look at me. I'm Beyonce. They have the I'm in a relationship hat. Mm -hmm. They have the you know out with my girlfriends drinking wine hat. And why not just be the same person consistently mm -hmm. across all boards? Like yes, that might be scary, but whose life are you living if you're doing anything other than that? And that's a really interesting thing to sit in. And coming from somebody, guys, and full transparency or coming from somebody that was so afraid to be myself for so long out of fear of being judged out of fear of not being liked out of fear of being ostracized out of fear of I mean you name it I had fears around it and it is so liberating yeah to really not give a shit about what people think mm -hmm. in a way that I get to be me and if you don't like it you're not my people and, and, so, and if you do like it, you're my people. Yes. And that's awesome. And there is filtering that goes on, guys. Alexi is not just walking around saying no. everything that comes up to her head. Being me doesn't mean I give me a pass to be an asshole. Yeah. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not direct and I'm not an asshole. I'm just being me. Yeah. No, and you're it, just a dick. If being you means um, you're doing it at the expense of somebody else's joy and happiness, then, then you're being an asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't get to be an asshole. So um, it, it is a process, but it's super fun when um, you actually get to be yourself. Like mm -hmm. think about this Facebook Live. These are fun because we're just being ourselves yeah. and sharing ourselves. We had to be like... 
Hi, I'm Alexi Panos. Hello, Let there. me share with you the five secrets of the four hidden gems of society. That would be weird. That'd be super weird. Um, wait, somebody said some things that we can talk about. Um, what did they say? Scout said, how do you love, yeah, what if you're dealing with loving a prior addict and they don't let you in? then that's a part of your journey and your process, and can you love them right where they are? And nine out of 10, no, I gotta say this. Yeah. Nine out of 10, they're not letting you in because you want them to let you in. And you want them to be something that they currently cannot be at this moment. Or they're not, exactly. So, so the acceptance of what is, like yeah. really. Like, like really, like, like really. Like diving in here, like okay. Like for real. The experience that's happening over there in my partner, who I love, is a certain thing. Mm -hmm. Can I bring love and compassion to that experience for her and for me? Mm -hmm. Can I drop into my body and like still find my own joy without her or him needing to change in any way? Literally, nothing needs to change over there for me to have the experience of joy, harmony, peace, love, abundance. Yes. Nothing needs to change over there. That's all needs met. When you can fill your cup in that way, and operate nine out of 10, your partner is gonna go, can I have some of that? Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> a gentle reminder that you chose them. Yeah. And like often we choose people and then we go, wait, 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 I know I chose you like that, but I actually don't like it right now. Yeah, and I different. want you to change. Yeah. And I want you to do it my way, and I want you to love me the way that I need to be loved. On the timeline that I think it On should the time be. And you need to do it in the way that I feel is right, you're wrong, I'm right. And we forget that we chose these people. Yep. And we chose them for a reason, whether we chose them consciously or unconsciously, there's always something bigger at play. And when you can look at the, the, the part of you that chose to be with somebody mm -hmm. who might need some healing in one area of their life, yes. might reflect that there's some healing that gets to happen within you as well. And maybe that's why you two are together. And yep. That's not to say that you get to stay in a relationship that's abusive or not working or where somebody's not willing to do the work themselves, but it is to say that you are 100% responsible for creating, allowing, or perpetuating the situation and what do you choose to do about it? Yes, this is a good one. Um, uh, Ashley, Ashley said, what if you're the one who is a hormonal mess and is giving pretty much all of your love to your child, leaving not a lot for your partner. Ooh, this is Ashley. huge and this happens all the time. Thank you for asking that question yes, thank you and for having being the courage honest. to ask that because exactly. you are bringing light to what most women do not feel comfortable talking about and I do not have a child yet. Um, however, I do have a lot of friends who have kids mm -hmm. and I know that this happens. Um, your body's changing, mm -hmm. hormones are changing, you feel like you're a mechanical machine, like your body is being used as, you know, sustenance mm -hmm. for life for this little being. And often the last thing that you're thinking about is sex yeah. <laughs> with your partner. But again, the reminder here is do not put the love that mm. created this little amazing being mm -hmm. on pause thinking it's an either or a conversation. Yeah. Um, Yes, you get to honor how you're feeling, mm -hmm. and you also get to respect the commitment you made to your partner, and recognize that if you're giving a thousand percent to your baby and zero percent to your partner, you are essentially cheating on your partner with your baby. With your baby. Ashley, um, also, um, because I'm gonna speak from a man's perspective here, one of the best things you could do in this moment is to say to him, honey, I'm struggling, mm -hmm. and I need your support. You have always been my rock and you're such a perfect man and I'm so grateful that you're here and I know that I'm not giving you everything I could. Could you support me in making sure that we have at least one date night a month? Just one, one time where we, you know, put the kids in daycare or whatever we have to do and, and like just play. Yeah, and Ashley just said exhaustion and being touched out is the main cause. Ashley, if you're exhausted, this is where you get to make 
um, support a priority. Yes. You get to say, you know what, we need to maybe cut back a little bit here so mm -hmm. that we can hire some support around the house or with yes. the baby certain hours a day so I can nap or whatever it might be. Whatever you need to do, because listen, if you are pouring out of your cup and your cup is empty, that little baby is not going to get the type of mom mm -hmm. that is needed for that baby to have a really powerful life. Like yes. you really want to think about the example that you're leaving for your children and the example that you're giving your husband in terms of, you know, like what you're worth. You're worth taking care of yourself so that you can pour from the overflow of love in your heart, in your energy, and in your connection to your partner. Yes. And mama, everything in nature is always moving and always changing. This is a season. This is, this is yeah. a snippet in your journey. And so I don't know what's happening, but I hope that if, I'll say this, if you're in resistance to it, it will chase you. It yeah. will haunt you because yeah. you're focusing on it. So one of the things you can also do is make a list. You can even do it tonight. You can do it the moment this ends. Make a list of all the ways in which you are the exact opposite of what you think you know, exhausted, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Make a list of all the places where you're in life, where you're, where you're, where you're amped, where you're having uh, these experiences of, of joy, where you're, you know, anything, anything close to that will be supportive because what you focus on expands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and just know it's a process. Give yourself some grace. Mm. You know, your parenthood, we're not there yet. So, you know, we're speaking from the experience of our clients and our friends and the people that we've worked with. Yeah. Um, but give yourself some grace, you know, like you're learning and that's okay and that's perfect. And you have an awareness that something needs to shift. So that's your job to shift it. Yeah. And that's your job to say, okay, what do I choose now? Like, do I choose to keep suffering and exhaustion and overwhelm and mm -hmm. feeling like there's not enough time or whatever? Or do I choose to create something different? Yeah. So, um, Sending you love, Mama. Sending you love. Yeah. Um, Hayden, we see you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we should probably we get off soon. Need to eat dinner, and it's yeah. almost 9 p.m. Somebody asked where we're from. If you guys have never seen us before, and you're like, "Who the heck are these weird people?" <laughs> I'm Alexi. Hi. Here's what I look like without my spirit uh -huh. hood on. Yay! That's Preston. My name is Preston. Yeah, I love you guys. We love you guys. We love you, and we live in California. And um, we are children of the world. Mm -hmm. I forget who gave me this feather. Somebody asked me that. Uh, someone gave it to me in a ceremony. Um, and I don't remember what kind of feathers they are. but uh, They're beautiful. They're I like have, red and blue, too. Yeah, they're. I think they're macaque. Macaw? Am I saying that right? Definitely not macaque. <laughs> macaque? I think they're macaque. Macaque. Probably um, not. If you guys have not shared this video, do so. <laughs> um, because we're going to be giving away a book or two. Uh, either now or never, or love louder, or we fifty ways to do yay. a whole little package. Or right yes, exactly. So make sure you share this. We love you guys so much. Blessings and blessings. Watch the replay. Share it. We love you guys so we love much. Love you guys. Oh, and any of you in Australia or New Zealand, we are coming for you. Yes. In two weeks. Literally yes. two weeks. We are doing New Zealand experiential learning, all about embodiment, yes. all about the art of Game embodiment. Game on. Uh, for those of you who have done Bridge Experience on here, just type in there yes. what a game changer it yes. is. Peter oh, Kelly! Peter Kelly just joined. What a, that's the homie. Um, follow her stuff. Check her out. She's a real deal as well. Um, but for those of you that have been in the Bridge Experience and know what the result is and know what you go through, yes. just type a little something in there for people who are like, what the heck type is Bridge Experience? that shit. Because the Bridge Experience is legit it's yes. the bomb we put our hearts and souls into it and we put the best of all the trainings we've done from all over the world our little spin on it um some unique stuff that we created and it's just it's it's an awesome way to get to know yourself and Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. really embody the work yes so bridgeexperience.com for you aussies and new zealanders february through april auckland perth adelaide UK. melbourne Sydney. Gold Coast. UK, we are going to find a way to come to you. You, We know you're a big audience. Um, yes. yes, Peter, watch this from the beginning. Yeah, we Peter, love you. we talked about sex, girl. We talked about sex. And you're pregnant. And you're pregnant. Which means you've been having sex. And we talked about pregnancy, too. Yep. All right. Oh, wait, look at my bird dance. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do look that. Look at my bird dance. Don't do that me. dance. Oh. Don't do this that This is going to be my paw dance. dance. You just got to do like, my paw dance. like this. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs>
All right, we'll see you guys. We love you so much.